Hello, Cancer. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Cancer is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free, doesn't cost you anything. If there's anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Cancer, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And look at that beauty. That is an ace of cups. Um, I think we're ready for new, new love, new excitement, new passion. Um, maybe we're looking for, um, or we're ready for, a new purpose, a new path setting out on some new adventure, some new quest that is going to fulfill our heart, you know? It could be a relationship, could be, um, could be a, a career path, a creative path, could be a new life path, right? But I feel like there's something, something within you that needs, um, needs a voice, right? Needs an expression. So we're setting off on something new that is inspired by our heart, right? We're being led to something by our heart. This is very good energy. We're going to put some other cards around this energy, right? To see what else might be going on or where this is going to find expression or perhaps what some of the obstacles to that expression could be. Here we have a five of wands. We've got a prince of pentacles. We've got the art or temperance card. An eight of pentacles. This is very good. We have some... Um, we have some fire energy that kind of is is going along with this water energy, right? It it might even be with this five of wands here that we're trying too hard, you know, that we're trying to um, we're trying too much to coerce the universe to become what we want it to, rather than just following the heart, letting the light just kind of um, just come forth from us. There we have a three of cups. We have a princess of pentacles. We've got the prince and the princess. We've got the eight of pentacles up here. And we do have the lover's card, which is very, I think, very appropriate here. Uh, we've got the death card. And finally, a three of pentacles. So a three and a three, I think that's very, very significant. Because this is us understanding what it is we want, understanding how to do it. Right? This is understanding the feeling. This is understanding the the physical requirements that are going to, you know, things that have to function in the material world in order to, to manifest this. We're going from water to earth, right? From feeling to, to action, right? It's, it's very, very good energy. I think the five, because this is a little bit of the fire energy, right? It's a, um, it's an active card. I think this card is talking about the regulation of our, our efforts in a way that's like, um, to me, it's very Taoist. It's very Wu Wei. We don't want to force things, but we don't want to be inactive either. We can't do nothing, but we can't do everything. So we're trying to find that happy place, you know, between effort and um, kind of letting everything flow on its own, you know. Um, so I, I feel like we have to make an effort. We have to be conscious. We have to be intentional with with what we're doing, with what we want, how we're expressing what we want, and how we are um, making decisions day to day to, to get that fulfillment, to follow our heart, right? But at the same time, we can't try to force things if they're not ready to come into alignment with us, right? Or if there's something in us that's not quite ready to come into alignment with the, the outside world. See, what we're trying to do is get this ace of cups over here to this lover's card. Because this lover's card is us celebrating the, this is the celebrating, celebrating the union of our heart, our soul, 
with uh, that which we desire, right? Whether it's a relationship, maybe this is a true love situation. Put the pitchforks away. I can hear them coming out right now. I can hear the groans. Not everybody's looking for a romance, right? And that's okay. This doesn't have to be romance. But it could be, you know. This is a quest. This is our, this is our um, kind of divine quest for that love, for that fulfillment. Whether it's through art, whether it's through spirituality, whether it's through, um, you know, uh, uh, romantic relationship, family stuff. Whatever it might be, whether it's through career, finding that passion, finding, um, finding that path in your life that your heart is pulling you toward. You're being pulled somewhere, right? And you're being t pulled toward the union of you and this other thing. It could very well be a person. We could be talking true love here, okay? Um, but the, the idea here is that we're trying to achieve that union and the celebration of this union, the understanding of what it is that this Ace of Cups really represents and achieving achieving this path, you know, um, achieving the understanding, but then also the implementation of it. And for that, I think we sometimes need to yield. Sometimes we need to allow things to go their own way, especially with that death card sitting there. Sometimes we need to just let things go. We don't want to hold on too tight because we think we're following our heart, that we cling too tightly to other things that are meant to leave, you know? Relationships that have run their course and now they've moved on, other people in our lives that come and go, um, jobs that come and go, friends that come and go. Even, the, even that feeling that comes and go, that enthusiasm, that love, you may feel drawn to something for a certain time and feel like this is our whole world, this is our holy grail. But then what about if time goes on you realize I don't feel that way about it anymore. Do you cling to it, try to hold on to it? Or do you allow it to, to exit your life and open your heart to what's coming next? I always say it's not about what you're doing necessarily, but how you're doing it and why. So the Ace of Cups, we sometimes wonder, well, what is it going to be? This is the seed of something. What is it going to blossom into? In some ways, it doesn't matter. In some ways, it's going to blossom into many different things. Right now, this is not defined. It's not a particular thing. It's the feeling. It's the seed of that feeling of doing that thing, why you're doing it, how you're doing it. But it doesn't really matter so much because it will change. Right? Right? It will change, but we're looking for every moment of our life to have this Ace of Cups feeling to it. In everything we do, we want to feel this passion and this enthusiasm, this, um, this love, this pull, right? This is that thing which we are, we've opened up our hearts and we're allowing it to come in. And s things are going to come and go, all right? But it's the path, it's this... It's the, the process of this that is meaningful, okay? And if things stop being meaningful, then they stop being meaningful. You do something else, right? Let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is a random card from the Smith Waite Tarot. This is the factor infinite and unknown. And we are just going to put it down right here. We're going to put Alien, Simon, Mork, Ripley right there on top. We're not going to look at that card until the very end. But it will tie everything together and it will give us our confirmation at the end of the reading. If at any point during this program you feel like you know what that card is, I want you to put your prediction in the comments. I want us to do it together. I feel like the more we exercise our intuition, the stronger it will get. And I guarantee over time, if you play along, you'll get better and better at predicting that card. Okay. Now let's look around the room. We've got a couple of majors, major, major, and major. This is us, um, the, the art or temperance card, right? This is kind of our, our strategy. And it goes right along with this fire energy. This is a Sagittarius card, represents the fire, kind of represents the test kitchen, you know, where we've explored a lot of different things in our lives. I feel like you've had a lot of 
a lot of ideas about what things you want to do with your life, about what's meant for you, about what path to take. Could be that you've tried a lot of different paths. Okay? And it could be that now we are embarking on uh, this new one. Okay? But there's still this kind of this idea that, um, with the, the connection with the fire energy here, that maybe we, we have different expectations. That there's part of us that wanted something else to be our life. But what we want and what is actually meant for us, what is our actual fate and destiny are different. Because sometimes, and I think in this case, it's one of those occasions where we don't, we don't always know exactly what is in the depths of our own soul. So we think we want something. Well, that might just be a temporary desire, right? Rather than something that um, comes from a much deeper place. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like spirit has a different idea than we do. You know? But I think you've been through a lot of challenges. You've learned how to regulate this fire energy. We, you've learned how to let go of things that, that aren't meant for you. You know when to grasp and when to let go, right? That's five of, five of wands, the five fingers that most of us have to grasp things, right? And that's kind of, if you think about, we have opposable thumbs, right? Because we're meant to grasp and release things. That's part of our part of our tool kit here um, in, in a very well in a very literal way that's what we do but with the emotions too you know and this card is right over that ace of cups we have to know what to grasp onto what to cling to what to hold on to and what to let go of what to allow to go its own way you know if something is um if something is, is exiting your life, we let go of it, right? We have to know when to fight for what we believe in and fight for what we love and when to just allow things to take their course. Um, and I think you've learned that. I think you've learned that the, the, um, the delicacy of that, right? It's a very fine line between when do we, when do we hold on and when do we let go. Um, You've got this eight. Well, let's let's finish up with the with the major arcana. Um, this is you grasping. This is you letting go. Okay. This is knowing what our heart desires and what we what path we're on, and we're trying to achieve this union. And this, I think, is what we have what we've let go of in the past, and what you're going to be asked to let go of again in the future. And it might be this very thing that you that you come together with. It may not last forever. It may not be infinite and eternal, right? It could be. Um, but it's kind of, in this reading, you know, we don't see any swords cards. I feel like we're not worried about that. We want to enjoy this path. We feel this pull. We feel our heart opening to receive right now in this moment, and this is what we're going to do. If tomorrow things are completely different, the universe is completely different, that's okay too. We'll deal with that tomorrow. But right now we feel this pull, and it, it could be towards a person, could be towards a, a creative effort, a new job, a new career, it could be you're drawn towards family, you're drawn toward, um, you know, art or music or dance or whatever it is. It could be anything. That's the point of this, uh, of this Ace of Cups here. And I think that really we have a lot of these in us. And the more we go through this process, which again, I think is this kind of being in the fire here with this kitchen, this test kitchen, the more we um, go through this process, the more we start to discover that something within us that does not change, that is not subject to clinging or, or letting go, right? We discover that thing that is kind of eternal. You know, maybe we can't describe it. Again, there's no swords cards. We can't really put our, our finger on it. Um, but let's see, we've got some fire, we've got some water, we don't have any air. We've got earth, 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 and earth. A lot of earth energy here. Top and bottom, top and bottom. The beginning and the end of the paths, uh, inside and outside, is this earth energy. It feels like this is a really practical, grounded kind of thing 
that you're open to, that you feel drawn to, this, this Ace of Cups, right? So if this is a romantic relationship, this is one where you can really see the future. You can see the life, the family, the business, whatever it is. You, it, it makes sense. It's something that really does, uh, it, it is something that you can build with this person, right? You've got the builder underneath everything. You are the builder. You're the one that wants to build and put together and stack things up and um, and keep uh, doing more. It's kind of a making something more, making it more complex, yes, but it's kind of, it, it almost feels like a security thing in a way, right? Because we're building up so many things, it's like we're putting on layers around our lives, you know? This is, um, this is uh, just kind of, adding more and more to the structure you know uh we've got our built we've got our foundation we're going to put walls up we're going to put a roof on it we're going to put some tiles down we're going to put some siding around it we're going to put a fence around that you know um we're going to put up some sheds we're going to build a garage we're just going to keep adding on you know keep building the more we build uh the more likely it is to stick around you know and I feel that this is kind of in re relationships too, we do this. That we start adding layers and layers. Uh, we're, we start building up certain things and building this future with someone. And it feels like you know, now it's kind of like now we're here and we're safe and we're not going anywhere. You know? And this could be for good or it could be for, for, for evil in our lives. And it really depends on how we're motivated. Okay? Um. <clears throat> We've got this. We've got this future that we're really that we're trying to build, and whether this is relationship, whether this is career. Um, the four, uh, sorry, the eight of pentacles up here. I'm thinking of four because I'm thinking of like structure. I'm thinking of building that foundation, having that kind of safety, security, and stability. All right, that's what we're trying to build here. The Eight of Pentacles is reminding us that we need to slow down a little bit. We need to remember that um, sometimes this intense building up of something is uh, an effort for us to cling to something that we're afraid of losing. Right, so we've just put layers and layers and layers around it, so it's it's difficult for it to go anywhere, you know. Um, the Eight of Pentacles is reminding us to slow down a little bit. To yes, we we want to build, but you've got to make sure that you don't smother this wonderful water energy, you know. We've got to make sure that we don't um, completely evaporate that water and and lose sight of that that feeling. And let that feeling guide you with kind of how fast you're, you're moving with things. It could be that you started a, a new business and you're just um, like spending all your money, all your time on it, building it up, building it up. Let's get more inventory. Let's do more advertising. Let's build a second story onto the building. You know, let's hire more people. Let's just go build, build, build more, more, more. We start to lose sight of the real kind of uh, feeling of it. You know, and it's kind of like we're doing that because, well, now I've built this up so big that there's no way that it can fail, right? Uh, but maybe we're investing too much too quickly in a business, in a relationship, in something else. You get this inspiration to start painting. You buy the canvases, a hundred different canvases. You buy all the easels, the paints, the brushes, many different kinds of brushes. Uh, you buy a whole new house, so you have a whole studio, um, you know, and you've got everything set up, and then you've invested all of your time and money, haven't painted anything yet. And then when it comes down to really do it, it's kind of like, mm, I think somewhere along the way I stopped feeling it. But we're in this momentum of building, 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 right? And this is really, it's a good quality. You're the builder. You're the one that is going to um, find something like this and you're going to build stuff around it. And that's, you know, when it's functioning at its optimal level, we're building our life around this ace. This is the well, right? And we're building the town around the well. We're not building the town up so high and so fast that, uh-oh, where'd the well go? 
you know. Um, and so if we're doing this in a cautious and slow and mindful way, then we are using this as our central, central focus and everything else is going around this to support it, whatever this love is. But we're not losing sight of this, whether it's a relationship, a family, a business, an artistic endeavor, whatever it might be. Okay. And I feel like this is, this is a delicate balance for you. I feel like you have this desire to just build faster and more and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's good as long as we are keeping this front and center in our minds, you know. As long as this is always going to be right here and we're always feeling this. And when we stop feeling this, it doesn't make any sense to keep building, you know. Um, but I feel like that's what you're looking for right now is, is someone or something around which to build a life right? If this is you and that soulmate romantic partnership, you know, build a life around this union, around this love. Yeah. And that's a very special thing. Really, really, truly. And if we are balanced, if we understand this message, then we've got nothing but celebration in front of us. The three of cups in the future position. It's going to be all sunshine and roses, right? It's going to be all good, all beautiful. We know that it will not last forever. Kind of knocked Mr. Ed over a little bit. Um, maybe you guys should scooch over a little. There we go. Um, this is the abundance that we feel. This is the love now. It's flowing. Now the well is doing its job and it's feeding the town, right? It's providing nourishment and love. It's doing, it's active. It's, it's, a, it's a geyser. It's a spring that's just bubbling up. And it's there, and it's it's old faithful, it's reliable, you know. And it, this is the function, this is, this is really happening. And as we go to the path of the serpent, we see that all this water is really nourishing this princess of pentacles. Because this is, um, this is really a, a life that is flourishing. This is everything that you're building has... When it has a purpose, we're not just adding on stuff just to build. I mean, this isn't the, the Winchester Mystery House, right? Which, funny enough, I, I lived very close to the Winchester Mystery House. It's a wonderful place to visit. Um, everything seems to have a purpose. Even if we don't understand what that purpose is, everything that we're doing has a function. It's part of the whole. There's this, uh, it, it's, it, there's a, a symbiosis with the, with the universe. Um, everything is, everything is a part of the whole. Yeah. Everything is a part of the whole. And, um, I feel like again, with this, this situation, whatever in whether romantic relationship, a business, creative stuff, it doesn't matter what it is. Right. The idea here is that, um, we're allowing this well, this water, this love, this energy to feed out. It's like an irrigation system, right? And now it's flooding our entire life and every aspect of our life. And it really extends out beyond our life, right? It, uh, the water isn't going to stop just at your fence, right? At your property line. The water is going to continue flowing on and on and on wherever it does, spreading out, you know, like groundwater. Yeah. Um, so this love that we feel, this life that we're building, is really going to benefit the entire world in some way. You know, it's benefiting you and the people close to you first, of course, you know, and maybe the most intensely and the most obviously. But that water is spreading out all over the globe. Eventually, it's going to surround the entire world. So by you following your bliss and achieving that union with that love and, and, and um, allowing this energy to permeate your life, you're doing a huge service to the rest of us, you know? Um, it really is uh, by raising our own consciousness, we raise the collective consciousness. By following our own heart and our own bliss and allowing this love into our lives, and letting that be the central focus of our lives, then we are spreading love all over the world. 
we're, we're raising that vibration in ourselves and all around us. And that's kind of what I am experiencing with the princess of, of pentacles here, that you become a source of all of this love and beauty and benefit, you know, for everyone. It just can't help but spread out, you know. Uh, the... The lover's card and the position of the environment, well, this is what we've been talking about. This is you achieving that union. This is you coming together with this thing. And the lover's card is not always romantic energy. It's union. It's commitment. It's a choice, really. It's a choice of what we want to unite with, what we want to allow into us, and what we want to put ourselves into. It's voluntary union, right? And, uh, and this is what you're aspiring to, whether it's business or pleasure, it doesn't matter. It could be both, it could be all of these things, right? This is the choice, this is the commitment. Even when we know that just by this very card, we invoke its opposite, really. When we grasp something, we know that eventually we're going to have to ungrasp it, you know? We know that anything that comes into being eventually will be out of being. So it is very Taoist. It is very much uh, these mutually entailing energies that just by this love, this by the presence of this love, we know that there is also the absence of love, right? Um, we know that when we are achieving a union, we're also guaranteeing a disillusion. Okay, so it makes perfect sense to me that there is the lovers and the death card right next to each other. Love and death, right? And I think there is a profound mystery here. I think for one thing, we realize that when we are in this kind of a union, we almost lose our self-consciousness. It is like a death, right? Like a, a, like a, a profound mystical kind of uh, death, this kind of union where we forget about ourselves. We forgot about the swords cards, right? We forgot about all our worries, cares, and concerns. This is, this is us. And when we have this union, this bliss of that three of cups, we lose ourselves. We're no longer a separate entity. We are one with the universe. The self-consciousness, the ego is just, where is it? It's gone, right? But it's temporary, of course as is, is everything, but it doesn't make it any less permanent in that moment. Okay, and the death card's in that position of what we don't want. Obviously, we don't want the disillusion. We don't want to let anything go. We don't want to have this beautiful, wonderful love and then one day have to not have it. We don't want to be here in existence loving our life and then realize that someday I'm not going to have it anymore. Nobody wants that. This is the card. It's not so much death. This is change. We have something we like. We don't want it to change. If, something is, if something's working, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah. We don't have a choice in the matter. This is the universe. This is the Tao. This is the flow. This is the way of things. We don't really get a choice. This is tomorrow. This is, this is one moment from now. So we might as well feel this, feel this in the moment. If our next moment is that, then I'm going to make the most of this right now. I'm going to prolong this moment for as long as I can. Because I know this is coming next. And that's okay. It's the way of life. It's the way of nature. It's the way of the universe. We understand. Three, three. We understand. The threes are all about that deeper understanding of the way things are. We understand the way things are emotionally. Emotionally, things come, things go. Might not feel the same way about you that I do today. When tomorrow comes, who knows, you know? And that, that's just a deeper understanding. It sounds kind of harsh, right? You, you imagine saying that to somebody, I love you right now, but tomorrow, I don't know. It sounds harsh, right? And it is, and, and that's, the, that's the death energy too. It's the realization that nothing is permanent. There's a very good chance that tomorrow you'll feel this way about this thing, this, this endeavor, this project, this path, this person. 
but you understand also the process, the way, the flow of things on the physical plane. You understand that whatever you build right now, you're building it out of you know, finite, um, mortal materials. Things that will eventually decay and rot. It may take thousands of years, sure, but eventually it will. Eventually. The pyramids have been there for thousands and thousands of years, right? Who knows how many? One day, the earth will take them back. It may take a long, long time. It seems like they're permanent. They're not permanent. Okay? And I think that you, you understand this, but we're staying in the moment. Okay? We're staying in the moment. And what you're uniting with, I think, is extraordinary. I want to look at the mystery card. What does Alien have for us today? Um, maybe it'll be that Four of Pentacles that I kind of, uh, I, was, I, I was seeing a Four of Pentacles as I was looking at the Eight earlier. Maybe it'll be a Four of something anyway. Because we got an Ace, we got a Three, a Three, we got the Five, right? Maybe we need that, that solidity. Maybe we need that materialization. Maybe with the three and the three, we understand the process of change. We understand the flow of nature and the Tao and all that. And that's fine, but we still want something solid, right? And a four is, a, is not a bad card by any means. Now, I don't know that this is going to be a four. Let's look at it before we get too far into the discussion. If you have a prediction, put it in the comments, okay? Let's see. Oh, indeed. Chariot card. This is your power card. Makes perfect sense. You're on the right path for you. And it's almost like this card's kind of telling me, okay, Paul, shut up. We're, going, we're, we're leaving now. Stop talking. Time to shut the door, roll up the windows, and drive. But I just keep, you know, yammering on. So this is like, yeah, yeah, I know all that. Just let me go in and, do, and do this thing and enjoy this thing. Oh, I apologize. I'm taking up a lot of your time. But this to me also has that idea of the four, Right? We know things are not permanent. We know that life is a flow, that things travel, that this chariot is going to keep moving at some point, never actually stops. But for right now, we're going to stop it, right? For right now, I want that four of pentacles. I want that stability. Even if it's temporary, I know, you don't have to keep reminding me. I want that four. And I'm just going to try to keep it together as long as possible until something changes. And then, well, you know, we'll adapt to that. But for right now, let's, let's enjoy this ride. Let's maybe, let's maybe stop on this journey and, and allow this moment to last for as long as we can. Yeah. Beautiful energy for you, Cancer. Very, very beautiful. Uh, we're going to do an extended reading too. And you can click up here or down below. New readings for Cancer every Tuesday and Friday. I am here every single day, 6 a.m. Chicago time. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. Leave a comment for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.